Welcome to Evil Live, the live media commentary show that answers a question. Do artificial human companions ever actually come to life? Subscribe if you're new to the channel because today we are reviewing Servant Season 4 Episode 1, Pigeon. And there's a reason for that, which if you watch the show you would immediately, of course, understand is being very similar to, <laughs> to uh, Alfred Hitchcock's The Bird. Birds. But um, yeah, my initial thoughts of this episode are... Where have you been? I love this show so goddamn much. There is something genuinely... I don't know if it's calming. It, it, for me, it's, it's, it's like a warm embrace, right? It's dark. It's mysterious. It's suspenseful. There are questions looming everywhere about what the hell is going on with this show. It's, of course, this is the fourth season, so it's been going on for a number of seasons, and there are still continued questions. And that's not really the totality of it, because the show itself is its own little bubble. But then you have the creatives behind it. The costume design is spectacular in every single frame. Uh, the, the set design is stunning. This series takes almost entirely... It takes place almost entirely in one single townhouse. But it doesn't feel confined at all. There, there are so many levels to this opulent home that you, you know, it goes all the way down to the basement and then the foundation itself is sort of crumbling. It just sort of draws you in to the place itself. Uh, it, it's genuinely stunning. So first of all, Clearly, I like Servant. I've been watching it for years now, and I've never met another human being in person who's ever actually seen it, which blows my mind. And it has everything to do with the fact that it's on Apple TV Plus only, and no one is paying for Apple TV Plus, and I don't blame you. But if there was a reason to subscribe for a month, this show is the reason. Servant is stunning. Okay, so episode review here. This is directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. It was written by C. Henry Chasen, and it premiered January 13 this past Friday. It's going to go every Friday until this season wraps up, and I believe this is the last final season of this show, which, you know, color me sad, but uh, it, it's, it's great. You can't really complain about a show that goes out on a high mark, you know, that never really lets you down in any significant way at all. This is one of those shows. If you grew up, like I did, watching Alfred Hitchcock Presents and having that be your sort of gateway drug into horror and adult suspense films, this series is your bread and butter. It is everything that, that makes life worth living. It's, it, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you second guessing. And uh, there's a ritual Literally, a ritual. There, there's a mindset I go into when I watch this film that is different than, or this series, that is different than every other show that I've ever watched, full stop. I sit down with a glass of wine, my wife, and I turn it on, and I just, I have no idea what's going to happen. I just experience. I'm a complete, I'm not, I'm not questioning i'm not second guessing i have no expectations i just know i'm going to be entertained and i let the wave wash over me the color palette of this this series is spectacular it's right up my alley it's just everything about it is firing on all cylinders and i just cannot understand why more people aren't watching this series it is so amazing okay that being said so then the synopsis is uh, as a paraplegic Dorothy is welcomed home. The war between Leanne and the Church of Lesser Saints seems to be reaching its peak. A sort of fever pitch, as you will. So if you've never actually been exposed to the series Servant before, let me sort of try to break this down for you. Um, there's a character played by Lauren Ambrose called Dorothy Turner. She, in a moment of, um, after having her ch first child... She was sort of going through massive depression, as many women do, and dealing with it as best she could. Her husband, played by uh, Toby Kebble, Ke Keeble, Kebble, played by Sean Turner. Uh, it, the character is Sean Turner. Toby Kebble plays him. Uh, he, he's a husband. He's a chef, a professional chef. And so he was out uh, doing, you know, his, his job. 
uh, Dorothy is normally a TV news reporter that's sort of climbing the ranks and she's, you know, extremely good at what she does and her, her career is her life. But of course they got pregnant and so she has to sort of tamp down and, and focus on, you know, dealing with that. Um, but again, postpartum depression is a real goddamn thing and it's not every woman experiences it and certainly not every, everyone who experiences it experiences it in the same ways. And in the story, Dorothy, um, she almost sort of becomes a zombie. She goes kind of numb. She's fulfilling these motions that she has to fulfill. And in a moment of um, a lapse of memory or whatever, she ac totally accidentally leaves her child out in the car. And the child then dies of just exposure. Just being out without any support, without any food or anything. And ultimately, the worst possible ending, the child ends up dying. So the husband comes home, finds his wife fully exhausted, just sort of waking up like, what's going on? You know, she doesn't really understand what's happened, what's happening. She doesn't get it. She's not processing it in her mind. She is sort of reverted in order to protect her own self and her own sense of sanity to not remember what she actually did. That's the setup of this show pure horror but then in order to deal with it her therapist gives her a doll in order to try to process the fact that she lost her child and she's trying to use the doll as uh, th this sort of conduit to healing right well she ends up believing that the doll is real and then they end up getting a nanny. The nanny is played by Nell Tiger Free who is amazing. She plays Leanne Grayson, this mysterious young woman and she comes into the house to be the nanny for this doll and the doll comes alive so everyone is properly freaked out except for dorothy who always thought it was alive in the first place because she can't mentally process the fact that she accidentally killed her own child uh and it's tragic but what we learn throughout all of the seasons preceding this one is that leanne has been involved in this weird religious cult that she's trying to break away from. And so this family, the Turners, are trying to sort of not only protect her and wean her off of it, but also try to figure out where the hell did this baby come from that they all are acting as if it's their own and the husband knows the truth, but he's trying to protect his wife. Their brother, uh, Rupert Grint, plays Julian Pierce, the brother, you guys know him from uh, Harry Potter. Uh, he is doing his best to support the family and, but he also doesn't want to continue this sort of nonsense of lying to his sister, but then he doesn't want his sister to go off the deep end. And so the first three seasons are trying to unravel all of these crazy, crazy mysterious secrets. And we get to a point where we realize that Leanne is not just a victim of a cult. There is something more to her. She is genuinely powerful and influential and so there's been some homeless uh, kids who have sort of taken over the park that's not you know like a block away from their home and she has sort of garnered influence through her projected power and authority over these people to sort of watch her and the family to protect them from this um, church of lesser saints cult that is trying to get in and and take Leanne away. But it's not just that. It's also the idea of who is this baby and where did Leanne get this baby? Because she's clearly not been pregnant before. At least that's what we're led to believe. And so it, it, all these questions are sort of firing at the exact same time and all this mystery is building. And so we enter with this episode and there have been attempts on Leanne's life by that church of lesser saints already in past seasons. And so we open with um, at the end of last season, um, Leanne has been punishing people who try to get her out of the home or get her away from the baby. And that includes Dorothy. And so Dorothy was fell slash pushed off the top balcony of her home, fell two stories down to the ground, damaged her spine, and she's been in the hospital is sort of the setup for this first episode. And so she's finally coming home. And so uh, Leanne is doing everything she can to sort of get the home ready. And of course, Sean is out doing his chef, TV chef gig, you know, sort of a Gordon Ramsay type deal, uh, reality shows and such. And so he's off doing that. She's home with the baby, 
we still don't know who the hell this baby is. It sort of goes from being a real baby to a fake baby, depending on who is watching it and what the circumstances are around it. It's very, very confusing and crazy, but it's amazing. And so she's doing her best because she genuinely wants to be a part of this family in the capacity of at seemingly a nursemaid or, or like a, you know, like a, a live in um, daycare person, but infinitely more than that. She wants to be ingrained in the, the soul of the family, like a part of it, you know? And so she's doing everything she can to get the, the home ready for Dorothy to come home. And then the threat of this Church of Lesser Saints cult comes around again. And so she goes outside to get some flowers out of the trunk um, that were left there by the brother of the, the family car. And then she sees these cult members start to sort of crowd around her. And so she does everything she can. And the entire first like main portion, like three fourths of this whole episode is her isolated within this uh, SUV or, or RV uh, sort of car trapped because outside of it are all the cult members trying to get in and get her. And it's this sort of panicked uh, survival mode sort of framing the camera work in this is unparalleled. The cinematography in this series is great normally this episode is next level and the fact that it's the first episode in the fourth season knowing it's gonna be the last season a lot of expectations are gonna be built you know we want this to be truly amazing sorry i didn't go to the next scene here we want this to be truly truly amazing and so we are sort of sitting here with expectations and they're all just being exceeded in every single scene it is just beautiful and you know one of the things that i love about this show is that not just i'm uh, by uh, trade i'm a, by profession i'm an art director uh, uh, basically a graphic designer ultimately but um so i i have an eye for this sort of thing it's it's what I, how i make my living you know and so watching this is uh an exercise in indulgence for me it is so beautiful. Every frame is so perfectly set up and executed. And the camera work is stunning. And it starts from these insane camera angles that don't really logically make sense. But you get these single take camera cuts that are just fantastic. Going through the windshield into the cab of the, the car and then out. You're getting this sense of confinement within. And then as soon as the camera leaves the inside of the truck, you get this sort of open expression of this autumn environment which is visually seductive but terrifying because there's this cult all around her the musical score is top notch the acting is amazing everything about this first episode is glowing it is just so stunning and it's not just the wine talking I'm 99.9% .9 sure. <laughs> I'll leave I'll leave some something open for that just in case. Uh, but genuinely, it's amazing. And so finally, she uh, fi figures out a way that the the cult members all abandon her because she's honking the horns and the neighbors are coming out and stuff. So she finally gets back into the house. Dorothy finally comes home. Dorothy wants nothing to do with her because she clearly believes that there's something evil about Le Le um, Leanne. And we're, as an audience, sort of leaning on that as well. Like, there is some power to her. And uh, the only reason why the cult members were allowed to, you know, sort of crowd and sort of trap Leanne is because all the homeless people in the park were all rounded up. So we know that there's outside forces actively trying to isolate Leanne so that the cult can then come in and contain her. So there's a constant level of fear and tension from without but then again within when everyone anyone tries to whenever anyone tries to separate leanne whether it's the family themselves or someone outside the family from the baby or from the family the turner family they end up being hurt like dorothy or killed so much gravity around that fact is that there's a mummified corpse in their walls because someone tried to remove them so it's, it's just so good. Everything about this is genuinely stunning and amazing. And I cannot every week wait for the next episode whenever the seasons are back on. And knowing that this is the final season, I am holding my breath 
for the next episode and any answers that we're going to get. But outside of just the actual story and the incredible crew that is putting together this amazing, amazing story are the producers. So they're allowing brand new filmmakers, brand new directors to come in and cameo and have their vision expressed through the script that's written. And, and so this is, this is an opportunity for up and coming suspense directors to really make a mark. And you don't see that normally. People are so protective about their intellectual properties that they don't want anyone else to touch them. You know, we see Disney constantly firing directors because it's not their vision of what Star Wars should be, for example. But in this particular case, M. Night Shyamalan and... Um, I'm going to look really quick. Just uh, give me a second to, to pull up my notes here. Um, of course, I don't have my... Come on now. Um, Tony Basquillip. I hope I said that right, but I don't think I did. He created this show, and he's really the name that's behind it. But M. Night Shyamalan came in and, and sort of is helping executive produce. And so he's the sort of famous person that's, you know, sort of driving this train, as it were. But they're giving other directors opportunities, brand new directors, opportunities of, you know, different backgrounds of individuals, different ethnicities, different genders just to allow them to explore this sandbox. It has never fallen flat. It is always fired on all cylinders. And you can't say that about any other series. Sometimes you have episodes in other series that are straight up garbage, or they didn't make sense, or they didn't feel cohesive with the rest of the season of whatever this series was. That has never happened in three seasons of Servant, ever. It has always been held to a standard that is so far beyond every other series out there streaming that it's almost like it should have failed by now. It should not work. And it always does. And it, I'm just, I can't believe how consistent and emotionally driven this series is. I mean, genuinely, it is my favorite series full stop that is on. And that's that's talking about House of the Dragon. That's talking about Andor, Game of Thrones. I mean, Mandalorian. It's, it's above and beyond everything else I have ever seen. And I desperately am in love with this series. It's so beautiful. And it's so great. So this episode was just so primed to be amazing. And it, again, fired on all cylinders and it worked perfectly. So as soon as Dorothy comes home, she's refusing um, Leanne. Sean, the husband, is also telling her, look, you can't come and see Dorothy. You don't, can't, you know, can't sort of take care of her because that's sort of the role that Leanne has taken in the past. Um, she needs her space, obviously, for obvious reasons. And that is sort of triggering Leanne. But now, finally, the homeless people came back. Um, they were sort of, you know, wrapped up in, you know, being taken out of town and stuff by some mysterious third party. Now they're back to protect the home. And this next episode is going to have to deal with the repercussions of not only the cult being fully active trying to capture Leanne, but also Leanne trying to reintegrate with the family that she had thus far in the last season, at the end of last season, burned because they didn't want her a part of the family anymore. So she's going to have to try to work her way back in. Watching Sean Cook in this series is an act of artistic beauty. They filmed this so well. And he has this wine cellar. And the way I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wine guy. The way they treat wine, pairing with food and pairing with experience and moments in this show is just so incredibly exciting and rich and vibrant. Um, juxtaposed against the, 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 the darkness and the crumbling foundation that is within the wine cellar ever since Leanne showed up. Uh, it, it, it creates this, this thematic turbulence, this discord that uh, is, is inviting, worrying, exciting. I, I, I don't even really know how to ex explain it. This is an experiential series. And I hope you uh, give it an opportunity because it's going to blow your goddamn mind. <laughs> At least I hope it did because it blew mine. It is bar none, 
the most amazing series on television. Of course, you have to like mystery and suspense. If you don't, then you know you're gonna hate this. Anyway, um, there's a part where the pigeons come out in full force, seemingly controlled by Leanne, not overtly, but you know, of course, they're here to protect her in some weird fashion. And so there's sort of, sort of this. Um, how would I frame it? This elemental force that Leanne projects and controls. She is learning more and more that she is in fact in control of this, this power. And so it doesn't seem like she is overtly making stuff happen. It feels much more uh, sort of like the omen where the devil is watching Damien and sort of protecting him. And so bad things happen to people who try to hurt him. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting where there's this sort of otherworldly uh, elemental force that is looking after her and protecting her. And the pigeons all come in, namesake of the show, and very much, again, the birds, attacking all of the cult members and make them run away so that Leanne can get away. Um, it, it, I, I didn't mind that it stole from Hitchcock because, quite frankly, I've been comparing this series to Hitchcock from the very beginning. And Hitchcock is a master of suspense and mystery. And that's what this series seems to be an homage to. And you can't be angry at that. You, you, you can't be frustrated by that. Not to mention it's a crazy old film that many modern audiences would never have seen anyway. So, you know, there's that. Um, in either case, I thought this was so incredibly good. It lived up to every expectation that I never even had because after the first season I was just open to whatever it was willing to present because it's that goddamn good uh, my, my wife and I are both on the exact same page with this show so I gave this five easily not even a consideration five out of five evil eyes this is a brilliant series that you have to watch if you like mystery and suspense you will thank me for it I promise that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. And as always, like it or not, evil spelled backwards is live. So get your asses out there and be evil. You owe it to yourself, really. <laughs>